The longest chapter of the book is on Barack Obama. Uh, I think it's fair to say you come out swinging, you call him a null set, a stupefying narcissist, and the consummate poser. Claim there was a quote. He claimed there was a, a void at the core of his politics and that he stood for nothing except himself and credited him with accomplishing only two things of note, derailing the Bernie Sanders insurgency and ushering in Donald Trump. However, bearing in mind the saying that every new president makes you miss the last one, did you ever miss Obama during Trump's presidency? If so, why? <laughs> Jonas? <laughs> Did I ever miss? No, I actually I didn't miss the Obama presidency. Trump was Trump was a, a buffoon, but he was uh, he was also kind of easy to mock. The problem with Obama was you were duty bound as a woke person. You were obliged to respect him, to pay deference to him. He couldn't do any wrong. It was such a suffocating period under Obama. And if you dare criticize him, he's the first black president, don't say that. Mm -hmm. You're going to hurt the cause, you know. You couldn't even criticize the guy. Mm -hmm. A complete zero, you couldn't criticize him. Do I miss that? No. Well, did I miss him? Um, you know, Trump was a mixed bag. He was a lunatic of sorts. But actually, I know this is a sacrilegious thing to say, but I'm beginning to feel he was better than Biden, except in the climate change issue, which is not trivial, but except for the climate change. Uh, Trump, I do not believe, I do not believe we would have gotten into this situation with the Ukraine if Trump had been in power. I don't believe that. I think Trump would have found a way to resolve the question of the Ukraine without a war. I do believe that. And I'm very worried that this is not going to extend to China. This is a, 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 a secular, normal, conventional administration, the democratic administration, which is completely out of control. They're nuts. Uh, and so I am not convinced that Trump would have been worse than Biden on these critical uh, issues of international affairs, of foreign policy. On climate change, yes, he would have been worse. Uh, there are other things he would have been worse. So you went to George Mason, which, by the way, is a very good college. How did you afford it? Oh, my parents. Shout out to my parents. My parents, uh, you know, they paid off my brother's education and my education. Yeah. So you must have been a good student. Uh. <laughs> well, how would you have gotten Well, I owed my parents some money because, you know, for some bad grades that I had. <laughs> how did you get in unless you were a good student? Oh, got you. Well, uh, you know, I mean... Oh, uh, yeah, that's for off-camera conversations. Say, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Did you get in on a tennis scholarship? Oh, no, 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 tennis, no tennis. Um, no, so actually I went to VCU first, Virginia Commonwealth University. Uh -huh. Yeah, and then I went to George Mason after that. Not because I so much wanted to go to George Mason specifically, but because VCU was cool and great, but I felt like it was too many distractions for me. You know, I wanted somewhere just a little bit more isolated, secluded, things of that nature. My brother had gone to GMU, so my parents were familiar with it. It was a good university, like you said, so that's why I wanted. Yeah. What was your strong area? Were you good in math science or in English um, history? No, writing, I guess. Writing for myself. <laughs> I guess also writing papers and stuff for like English or whatever. Uh, yeah, that's not really. really. My strong suits, yeah, right, I would say. Mm -hmm. yeah. How was your math science? Uh, I don't know. It was just, you know, whatever, average meter. If I found the subject matter interesting, then it was good. If it was like, oh, why am I learning about this? And how does this make sense to my life right now, currently, or where I want to go? And, you know, I just, 
Yeah. You did graduate, right? Yeah, I did. I did, yeah. For me, a lot of college and university is just regurgitation, I feel. If you have a great memory, you can really do well in university. Yeah, totally For true. me, I'm a little bit more of an independent, creative thinker, ideas, things of that nature. You know, it's just, it's not my cup of tea. Also, people look up to people who have, in a sense, you know, they've reached respectable positions, they have wealth, maybe, you know, they... When you see somebody with a Ferrari Lamborghini, you don't say, oh, he must have gotten good grades at college. No, you think this guy's either, he's doing something unique to himself, which he's mastered, which isn't necessarily taught in school, right? You know, so, for me, uh... I don't have whatever you call the Ferrari Lemon. Yeah, whatever. You, you get my point there. You, know, you like, don't respect me. No, I do for sure. But what I'm saying is uh, just university, it's for some people. If you want to become a doctor or a lawyer, by all means. But, uh, you know, I, I've got a little bit more autonomy for myself. And, uh, you know, I think I have my own ideas and vision for self. So that's what, yes. what kind of crowd do you hang out with? What kind of people? Where at university or like no right now? Uh, no now, no to be honest I have a few small circle of friends. Um, and what's the common denominator among you? Yeah sure independent thinking for sure. Uh, they're just their own individuals you know they're themselves unique autonomous. They're curious so there's an intellectual aspect as well to have these conversations. Do you read at all? I used to read a lot. Now, not so much. Yeah. Why not? Uh, because for me, it's, I think it's important for me to kind of live more life than to read. You know, I think reading is great, and I did a lot of reading to develop my own mindset and find out who I am and what I believe in or how I'm going to approach certain situations or thoughts. Once I develop that within myself, you know, it's time to kind of, you know, take action and, uh, yeah, it's, Put myself in a position to kind of go down. That makes sense. It does make sense. <laughs> How many times have you read my books? Oh, uh, which one? It depends which one. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's start with basics. Have you read any of my books? <laughs> I can tell from that laugh the answer is no. Thank you very much. <laughs> no, listen. Uh, I read this book. Oh, that's true. <laughs> that's true. No, your Gandhi book, I, I peered into it a little bit. To be honest, the whole Palestine what, issue... One second, the Gandhi book was less than 100 pages. <laughs> yeah, so no. When you say you peered in the middle, <laughs> not saying very much. No, to be honest, so look, the Palestine issue, the way I view Palestine right now, Palestine is in a state of lull. There's not much... Uh, not much simmering occurring in a direction of certitude, if you will, right? Things are just, it is what it is, and things are progressing in this natural Nothing direction. Nothing is progressing. Well, uh, and it's, it's either stagnant or regressing. Entropy, toward progression, no, a couple of steps back. I don't think it's toward well, I think as time progresses, the truth becomes younger. Maybe. So as time evolves and continues, that may be true. whatever okay. happens next. But, uh, yeah, so Pat, my point is, your book's very much great for a person interested in the issue. How would you know? You haven't read them. Come on. No, I've seen a lot of your lectures, your <laughs> interviews. Yeah, you know, I've dug up a lot of stuff with your lectures and interviews for sure. So, my point is, in the future, when I get, when I see Palestine evolving, and if I'm in a position myself, and if I'm still inspired, or not even still inspired, if I'm inspired emphatically at that point in time, and I can do my part at the least, that's when I'll come back around. Look into your, you know what I'm saying? Everything for me is step by step. My, my vision, my aim is not Palestine right now. That's the short By that time, my books will be collecting dots and they'll be wrapped in cobwebs. Yeah, no worries. I mean, uh, I'll hire a cleaning lady and, or a man, shit. A cleaning man as well and uh, <laughs> 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 figure it out. All right. So politically correct. I remember watching a uh, video of Boris Johnson and thinking that if he hadn't become the Prime Minister of Great Britain, he might have done something actually good. He might have been a pretty entertaining or memorable tour guide or bartender or something like that. In an alternate universe, what role do you think would be good for someone like Obama? That's a question by Jonas as well. In an alternate universe, what role would be good for Obama? Yeah, had he not become, you know, President. States of America.
You like basketball a lot. <laughs> you do. Yeah, that's true. You like basketball a lot. Okay, okay. And he had aspirations to writing. Yeah. So like everybody that's true. else. A lawyer, I guess, right? I mean, maybe a lawyer when you're doing That's what he meant. You'd be one more crooked lawyer. All right, one question is, what should be taught in schools? And other is, what ideas we should spend our time on more generally? When do we say, I don't have time for this BS, and leave it at that? In terms of engaging in public debates, you know, on, on controversial topics. Uh, it seems like, you know, your email address is not difficult to find. You probably make a point of responding to many people who do reach out to you. But uh, I can only imagine that lots of weirdness shows up in your inbox. How do you decide from whom to engage with and who not to engage with? And are there topics or ways of writing that work as red flags for you that it's probably not worth your time, of which you notice? That's a question by Jonas. I answer every email. My view is if you've taken the time to write me, I'm not so important that I can't find the time to answer you. I got that from Professor Chomsky, the guild complex, if I don't answer an email, Chomsky will never forgive me. So uh, I, I answer every email, yeah. however I would say that I don't necessarily continue a correspondence if I feel it's uh, not productive, it's not going anywhere, mm -hmm. if a person has uh, an agenda and just wants to force this agenda on me and I don't feel it's productive, and then I let it go. Your thoughts on Cornell West? Cornell West, you know I the man? I don't want to say it. Okay. I have definite thoughts on Cornell West, but I don't want to say it. What are your thoughts on Cornell West? <laughs> what are my thoughts on Cornell yeah. West? Uh... I respect him, I respect his mind, I respect his outspokenness. I think he's consistent in what he stands for. Uh, I think he, uh, yeah, critical, but also a, uh, a positive, optimistic mind as well. He, not, not cynical per se, I don't see that in him. Where have you heard him speak? Uh, just like uh, lectures and interviews on the internet. I've never seen him in real life. Mm -hmm. I read one of his books, I think, Hope on a Tightrope. A short, nice book. In inspiring, interesting. So you read one more book by him, not by me? <laughs> no, no, no. I don't know about you read the last book. But, uh, no, to be honest, you know, the lectures do so much more, uh, in a sense, you know, there's benefit to reading as well, but you can still get somewhat of the similar content. What you, what you lose out of watching and hearing is like you said with the, what was the other, Dickinson? Dickens. Right? Charles Dickens. Charles Dickens. Yeah, um, you know, you lose out on the, uh, the stylistic touch, the feel, things of that nature, right? So, do you have any... Uh, you don't want to speak on Cornell West, though? No. Perhaps. Okay. Off camera. <laughs> you want me to share my thoughts on Obama? You know, I asked a few people what, you know, among my cohort of peers, what their thoughts on Obama were. Uh, Obama won mainly because people were sick of the establishment Correct. and the usual politicians, old money, same circle, Bush, Clinton, blah, blah, blah. Uh, he was also very much a product of timing. It wasn't necessarily what he did. He took advantage of a situation and totally opportunity agree. presented to him. Totally agree. Uh, but it seems he wasn't necessarily ready for the presidency. He learned on the job. He did have something here, something there. But he's smart enough to perhaps be a fast learner, it seemed like, and he did a lot better than other people. Would you agree with that? Or? No, I wouldn't agree with that. Look, these are serious issues. I don't agree gotcha. with that. I think that politics is a very complex game. Mm -hmm. You need a lot of experience before you it can expect to achieve anything of substance. Experience in so far as mobilizing folks, knowing how to play the game? Yes, uh, under what else? Uh, understanding how the system works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Knowing how to play the game, understanding the system. Okay. It seems Obama's life experience also kind of benefited him. He wasn't from a wealthy background. Yes, he was. 
he went to the most prestigious uh, private school in Hawaii. Gotcha. Now his family was not rich, but yeah. he himself uh, had a very privileged existence. Gotcha. He himself, his, his family wasn't rich, that's true. Uh, more so in the direction as well that uh, he sort of represented the uh, the son with his single mother, he, you know. Yeah. So that sort of uh, narrative as well, I guess, kind of made him relatable to many, to the common person, perhaps you could say, uh, or at le or at least respectable by the respected by the common person. Um, the main thing it seems he had working for him was he came across with a genuine intention. At yeah, least, there was never at a first. genuine intention. Uh, the main thing he had working for him was. Uh, he was a black person who knew white people at the back of his hand. He was raised by his grandparents. They were both white. His father was a no-show. His father lived in Africa. His mother was mostly off in Indonesia mm -hmm. uh, or doing either research for her uh, doctorate dissertation or working there. Uh, he was raised by his two white parents. Seemed to have been his mother worked in the bank. His father was a salesman, I think. and. Um, he knew white people, and he knew his, his great art was, he knew how to make white people mm -hmm. feel good about themselves by feeling good about him. Mm -hmm. That was his thing. So he was totally disarming, mm -hmm. that's only because he knew whites. The, 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 the secret of Obama is not that he was half black, the secret of Obama was he was half white. Gotcha. He knew white people. Yeah, and he was playing to uh, what people wanted to hear. And he was an opportunist. And he, 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 he knew exactly how to manipulate white people. Yeah. You know, there was huge excitement about his youthful energy with immense promise. Very eloquent. At first, 2008 is what I'm referencing to. I didn't find him eloquent at all. It was all, it was really? all. Yeah, because nothing came from within. I don't think you can be a truly eloquent speaker unless it's. Uh, unless you're plumbing the depths of your own soul. Yeah, a lot of it was regurgitation, I think you said in the book as well. You said he, he just he copied had, he, had, he just had all these speech writers write yeah. these, these uh, cornball speeches. You know, to the, uh, to the audience who maybe aren't as uh, perceptive or observant, he came across as, wow, you know, like this enigma of a sort. Okay. Um, would you agree with Would you agree with that? The mass common person was, you know, people were they were they were ready to be they were ready to be inspired. You see, they walked in. He didn't inspire them. They were wanting to be inspired. So whatever he said, they liked. He didn't. It wasn't. That's true. It, it, it was. It was the they were looking for a savior. They were looking for something so as to forget the eight years under Bush, mm -hmm. they, um, they, um, they created in their own heads in Obama, a hip black president who was going to be our you know, black Moses, whereas in fact he was just one, oh, one more uh, charlatan, one more crook. Gotcha. Cool, that's it, thank you.